Hello everybody. Well, what a difference a couple of days make. This is the weather now. A couple of days ago, it was bright sunshine, blue skies. But I want to get on with sort of filling these up today. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see these. These are my potato pots. Um, so I want to get on with starting to get these planted, but a couple of little, the little things first. So I just had this uh, delivered this morning. It's upside down because I put a hole in it. So it's a 25 kilo sack of blood fish and bone which is what I use in the potato pots. Uh, that's gone up in price and the cheapest I could find was this one. And that was 24 and a half quid. Usually it's around 21, 22 pound. But just to let you know, it's still available fertilizer, although we're gonna struggle moving forward. So I've got this now um, and that'll do me a couple of years. Now this is a first for me. I don't normally leave them this long, but I've got three tubs here of potatoes to empty. I did empty a couple a couple of weeks back and they were sprouting so I'm expecting the same in these but I'm going to harvest these tubs on the same day that I'm planting my first tubers for this season which as I say is a first for me so we'll get on and get these emptied and see what we have. So let's see what's in the magic pots. I'm expecting some to be rotten like that one that's that's empty. And another one, but you can see the sprouts and chits on them, but these are still usable. So I'm going to have to sort my way through this lot. And probably what I'll do is I'll empty all of them, all three, and bring it back and show you what I've got. See, they were definitely rooting off. What's the site? They're still edible. There's another one gone. But on the whole, not bad. It could be a lot worse. There's another one gone, crikey. <laughs> so that's our three pots emptied. And here's the results. One overflowing mushroom tray. But that's three pots. And really, um, that would be, well, certainly two good pots worth in there There's every sort of two or three potatoes i was taking out i was throwing a rotten one away and you can see the detritus in there wasted potatoes so it's not something i'll be repeating i'll this year i'll take them all up as normal and store them at home they'll store better um it wasn't really an experiment i was trying it's just the way it happened there was just some left over that i never got round to emptying but certainly it won't be something I'll be repeating, hopefully. So here is this year's potato lineup for me. And I've got some Sarpomeras here, some Kennebecs, the American variety. Um, this one's King Edward, so I wouldn't be without them. Up here we've got Charlotte's and we've got pink fair apples up here. And I'm going to do something a bit different with these this year, well, well with some of them. And this one here is actually a supermarket variety that I saved that we really like the taste of. And it's called Laura and it's a red potato. So that's what I'm sowing this year, potato wise. Now, a couple of months ago, I made a video and I was going to do a test this year, a trial, um, pitting sort of chitted versus non chitted potatoes together to see which came out best to finally settle the argument. Unfortunately, we've had a very mild winter and all the potatoes have just chitted away happily as happy as Larry without me having to put them out in into light. Um, so normally what I do is I normally store mine in the shed at home and it stays cool and they stay dark. And when the weather's warm enough, you'll start to see the little green flecks starting to come on the eyes of the tubers. And that's when you put them out in the light. Because my big bugbear with that is that some people don't have the space. They don't have greenhouses, polytunnels, or vast windowsill space. And for most, for most part, many people are putting their potatoes out in the windowsills just to chip them. And they're using valuable space that they could get other plants going. And this has always been my issue with chitting potatoes early. But unfortunately, it's the same mild winter and they've all started early and they've all chitted. So I can't do that experiment this year because they're all chitted. The other one I was going to do was I was going to do a test with uh, main crop potatoes because I see a lot of people using four potatoes in a 30 litre bucket. And as most people know, that's just not really good 
for the potatoes. Too small a space, too many tubers, and you just end up with small tubers. So I figure I'll save that for another year now and I'm just going to get on and sow my potatoes. I know it doesn't work, it's not good for the potatoes. Um, but no, I'm not going to do it this year, maybe next year. So that explains that away. So that pota potato video I made was a waste of time really. But there you go, you do these things and in hindsight, you don't. <laughs> anyway, we'll get on with planting. Now, there are enough videos out there, enough people doing these videos about these 30 litre pots. So I'm just going to do the one pot and that's it done and I'll get on and do the rest off camera. But just to explain the concept, it's a 30 litre plastic pot with handles so you can lift it, move them around easier and make it easier to, um, to harvest them basically because you can tip them out into a, a wheelbarrow which you saw me doing earlier with the other spuds. Now, we grow in these in compost, and for me that was bagged compost. So 30 litres of compost, it's uh, two or three quid, and I will reuse this for four or five years, every year, just recharging it with, with a handful of blood fish and bone. This after a year, well after six weeks, all the feed in compost is basically gone. So you need to use that extra, extra boost from your blood fish and bone to feed your potato crop and keep it going. So after harvesting, I'll put it straight back in the pot, save it for next year, use it for four or five years. This is year two for this compost. And all I'm gonna do, just tip the whole thing out. And I'll start again. I'm just gonna one third fill it. There are different varieties, different ways of doing it. Everyone has their own way. I like to one third fill it, put a good grab handle, hand, handful of blood fish and bone and mix it in. Take your two sea potatoes. These are a main crop, these are Kennebec's and I'm going to nestle these right down into, into the compost and I'm going to third fill it again well, yeah, another third fill it until I've got a reasonable amount over the top another grab handful blood fish and bone and mix that in just loosely, the rain will wash that down and through, and then I'll just fill it up. Now, I've also got a big bag of straw there, which I'll use to mulch the top, just to keep the moisture in. And when, when this is full and mulched, because of the holes here at the side, which I've enlarged, and the ones at the bottom, the roots can get out of this. So they'll go on this bed here, which is a no-dig bed, uh, I think. No, it's not actually, it's just normal soil, this one. But it'll go on that, and I'll pile the soil around these holes so that the roots can get out and find moisture, just in case we get a drought, drought period. And that is essentially it. Don't need to make it difficult. Pop it back on the bed. And that's it. Now there are two types of potato. There are determinate and indeterminate types. And the determinates are your first and second earlies. Now, some people say that you can grow four in a bucket because the potatoes on a determinate only grow around the roots. So if you put the two in like I've just done then, fill them up a little bit more and put the two at the opposite hours of the clock. So maybe the first one's going at 12 and six and then the second one's going in three at nine, then you'll get more potatoes from your bucket. And that's fair enough if, what you want, if that's what you want to do. But as I've always grown international kidneys for my first early potatoes, they are an early main crop, but they're a great first early potatoes. Couldn't get hold of them this year uh, for various reasons. Um, so I'm not growing them. I'm not growing any first earlies this year. So, so I've always grown two of those because 
if you don't harvest them all as first earlies, they'll carry on growing and you can get some whopping great potatoes, still the same taste and flavour that you like from those potatoes, but just much bigger. So I've always just done two. But if you want to grow four, then you count on the first and second earlies if that's, that's your thing. Um, but anyway, that's it. That's as simple as it gets for me. I've just got another 50 old pots to do and that's done. But for now, look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Tirana.